All right, welcome to the next segment on the supergroups of protists. The one pairings, uh, we've already discussed the excavites. The SAR group, which includes the straminophiles, the alveolates, and the rosarians, now we're on the archiplastida. So you can see the archiplastida include the red algae and the green algae, which split into two major groups, the chlorophytes and the charophytes. And you can see that the charophytes are the closest relatives to plants. They're actually um, shown here as sister groups. And the final segment will include those groups, a uh, discussion of those groups in the, in the uh, clade Unicanta. All right, so let's talk about Archiplastida. Again, the Archiplastida are one of four major supergroups of protist. And remember, they all divide into subgroups and then sub further. So um, we've already discussed the excavates or the excavata, the SAR group, we're on the Archiplastida, and then there's the Unicanta. Now I've done a little concept map for each one, and I've also done a quick one for Archiplastida. So let's take a look. Okay, so we are on the um, Archiplastida, and I've already covered the other two groups that were before that. All right, so let's go ahead and do this in green. And we will have the uh, eukaryotic ancestor. And you remember the group that we already went over, excavates. And then we also cover the SAR clade. And now we're on the Archiplastida. And the next one will be the Unicanta. U Unicanta. There we go. And the Archiplastida. So this is the one we're dealing with right now. Now I'm not going to show their absolute evolutionary relationships, um, but to some degree I will. We have the red, red algae. And then we have the green algae, which split into two major groups, the chlorophytes and the charophytes. Why? <laughs> and the charophytes are sister species to plants or sister groups to plants, okay? So the charophytes are uh, basically the, the uh, green algae that it's closely related, closest, most closest related to plants. Now this is going to be the subject of another chapter. So we're dealing with today the red algae and the green algae. Now, this is the image that is uh, shown in your textbook, showing the relationships. However, they can be shown in several different ways. And you can see here that we have the red algae, which are the ones that are the basal group, right? For Archiplastida, that is. So those are the, going to be the ones that are, that had diverged first. And then the green algae and those diverged. And then the trophytes and the plants diverged from each other. So let's, the red algae are generally reddish in color or pink, and it's due to a pigment called phycourethrin. Now, they do have chlorophyll and can photosynthesize. Many of them live deep in the deep in the ocean in very dark um, areas. Uh, however, this red pigment uh, absorbs light at a different wavelength, so it allows them to still obtain the light and use it to photosynthesize. So the reason why they look red or pink is because there is much more of the phycourethrin than there is the chlorophyll. Now, these organisms are usually multicellular, and they can include very, very large organisms like very large seaweeds. The most, they are actually the most abundant uh, algae in, in the tropical areas. So you can see 
Part of this group includes uh, that type of seaweed that is actually used to uh, create uh, sushi. Now, the green algae are probably most, uh, what you're most familiar with, uh, then they're named green algae because they appear green. Uh, so uh, as you can kind of imagine that uh, they must have more chlorophyll or the green pigment in, um, in their cells rather than the uh, phycoerythrin, which is found in the red algae. Now it's the green algae that are most closely related to plants. Now, they are a paraphyletic group. So if you went back to the, the tree, you would see that the green algae are, are together. And remember, the plants are most closely related to the uh, charophytes part of the green algae. So if you included just green algae, you would be excluding the group, um, which is referred to as, as the typical land plants. Now there are two main groups, as I've discussed already, the chlorophytes and the charophytes. The charophytes are the ones that are most closely related to plants and um, in the, the tree, it kind of shows them as a, a sister group to plants. Now most chlorophytes live in fresh water. Some of them are marine, however. Um, some chlorophytes actually live in damp soil. Some of them are symbionts in lichens, which we'll discuss when we get to the chapter on fungi. Um, and some of them live in environments that are exposed to very intense uh, visible light and also UV or ultraviolet radiated light. Okay, so let's take a look at some examples of green algae. So here I've separated the chlorophytes from the charophytes. So let's look at some examples of chlorophytes. We have uh, the vulvox, which is a colonial unicellular organism. We have spirogyra, again, colonial uh, single-celled organism. Uh, Chlamydomonas, obviously single-celled or unicellular. And then this is a multicellular um, ulva. Then we have the charophytes, which look more, much more like plants. We have chara and then uh, coleochete, which is more colonial type, and then uh, microsterius. Uh, so this, this is quite interesting in shape as well. Um, so you can see the progression from, you know, more unicellular uh, organisms and algae to more plant-like uh, multicellular organisms. Talk about how uh, algae led to, to land plants. Now, um, what happened was a larger size and greater complexity evolved uh, in the green algae uh, leading to the plants. So this, this, there's three things that ultimately happened. So, of course, um, the algae, some of them we discussed already, they, they form colonies. So it kind of started out with, or that multicellularity uh, started out with the formation of colonies. Um, so what colonies are in algae are just individual cells that kind of live together. Um, now, what, ne what happened next was uh, multicellularity. So uh, the multicellular bodies uh, occurred by the fusion of the cells. And then tissues start to develop by what's called differentiation. So here we can see we have multicellular ulva, which is a genus uh, for the sea lettuce. And then ultimately repeated division of the nuclei with no cytoplasmic division occurred in uh, some of the chlorophytes, like this one. Now these are three things that occurred uh, during the evolution of now let's look at the life cycle of Chlamydomonas, which is an example of a green alga. It is a unicellular chlorophyte. Now, um, the evolution of the alternation of generations had evolved in, in, within some of the chlorophytes, and this includes the ulva. Um, however, we're gonna talk about the unicellular Chlamydomonas. So here, 
um, chlamydomonas can reproduce asexually and sexually. So let's talk about asexually first. So ultimately, this is a mature cell and then it can start to divide and then um, produce more zoospores and then become mature over time. So this is a continuous cycle. These are all going to be genetically identical or essentially genetically identical. But they can also reproduce sexually. So we have a mature cell, and then we have two different basically mating types. So here we have a plus and a minus, and these are each would be considered gametes because they're eventually going to fuse. And you can see they're, they're like opposite mating types. We're gonna see this when we move into the, group, the fungi groups. Now, once they fuse, this is called fertilization, and then a zygote starts to develop. Okay, so you can see this zygote right here. And then um, the cells within the zygote are going to undergo meiosis to produce more gametes, right? So then they're going to be releasing the gametes. And here, this these gametes are going to be like a mixture of the original gametes. So we have the plus and minus up here, and then uh, we have the mixture here. Again, this is sexual reproduction, and this increases variation in populations. Now, this is just a summary of the Archaeoplastida. I know this was relatively short, uh, but it's not a very large clade. Uh, and again, if we're just discussing the green algae, it would be considered a paraphyletic uh, group. If we considered all of the Archaeoplastida, that would be a polyphyletic group because plants are included. Now, remember the Archaeoplastida include the red algae, the green algae, and the plants fall in there as well. However, that is the subject of the next two chapters after this one. And then we have some key characteristics and then some specific examples. And we'll discuss plants, of course, once we get to chapter 29 and 30.